Alright, so what is UUOC? Or the UUOC Award? Or the Useless Use of Cat Award? Well, let's talk about it. Cat is a program. It's on your computer. You're going to run it from your terminal. It is a POSIX utility, so it's an external utility that's going to not be built into your shell. Maybe it is. I don't know what kind of shell you're running. But Cat's going to exist in your system, and its job is to concatenate files. It reads from standard in. It writes to standard output. But it can read from files instead of standard in if you give them as arguments. So what is the useless use of Cat? Well... That's when you use cat, but you didn't really need to. There are ways around it. In fact, using cat might not be necessary here, and hence why it's useless. And you get an award for it because it's one of those things where it's like, ah, you use this, you don't really need to, you could rewrite this to be better. So I'm gonna show you some examples of that today, and I'm gonna kind of demystify some of this stuff because it's surprisingly more complex than you realize. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So let's just jump right in. All right, so to get started, we have a completely empty directory here. We have a blank canvas to start fresh. Let's go ahead and make a new file. We're gonna call it file.txt, nothing fancy here, and let's put some data on it. What should we use? Alice. Bob, Claire, it's alphabetical, doesn't really need to be. Dave, hey, that's me. Foo, Bar, Baz, and whatever. It doesn't matter what's in this file. So we have file.txt, we can use cat to see what's inside it, and hey, that's the program we're talking about here, right? Cat, when people think of cat, they think, hey, this program's great. I give it the name of a file, and it prints that file to the screen. And yes, that is what it, do, what it will do, but it can do a lot more than that. But we're not gonna overcomplicate it yet, we're just gonna look at this file. So we have cat, file.txt, and of course, if you've seen cat, you've probably seen grep, right? We could pipe this to grep, because cat outputs this big giant thing, we can grep for something. So let's grep for Dave. Hey, cool. So we took that input, the input was cat file.txt, the input was all of this, and we ran it through the program grep, grep was given a filter of Dave, so grep only matched lines that had Dave in it. Yes, if Dave appeared in other lines, if there were multiple lines like, hello Dave, it would have matched that too, but in this example, we're keeping things very simple. So why did I bring this one up first? Because this one right here, people would call this the UUOC. This is an example of the useless use of cat. Why is it useless? because you don't need it. It costs your system a fork and exec. You have to create a new external process. You don't need it. The reason you don't need it is because there are ways to run grep without having to put the cat before it. So I'll show you what I mean. Grep takes the name of a file as its argument. So here's something cool about grep. If you don't give it an argument, it will read from standard input. Notice that it's hanging. There's no standard input here. Technically I could type here. I could say like, hello, and I could say Dave, and then it's gonna print it because it matched, and then I can do Control D to no longer give it input. That's a weird example. I probably shouldn't even include it in the video because it's just gonna confuse things. Forget I did that. So grep takes an argument, file.txt, and if it's present, it will read that file and not from this cat. So if you were to, you know, cat file.txt, then give it to grep dave file.txt, grep will actually read this and ignore this. This example is kind of weird because I'm using two different files. I could prove this. If we ran this, we get Dave. If I told grep to read in from dev null, we get nothing. So it ignored the standard input. Even though we catted into grep, grep didn't read standard and grep was given the name of a file as an argument. This argument's optional, but the point is we don't need cat for this grep example. We could just tell grep, hey, read this file yourself. We don't need to fork an exec um, cat. There's more to it though, there's more to the story here. Because we can do this, that's all well and good, but you can also do this. So what's the difference here? Because they look very similar, don't they? If we grep for Dave in file.txt, we find Dave. If we grep for Dave in less than file.txt, we get Dave. So what's happening here is that grep, the program is running with two arguments, and grep, the program, knows that file.txt, the name of the file, so grep, the program, opens that file reads that file and filters on that file. So grep is responsible for opening this file. By contrast, look at this notation. This is interpreted by our shell. In my case, I'm running bash, of course, shocker for this channel. We are running bash and bash sees this and it will read in that file itself. So bash will open this file, bash will open this file for reading and bash will hook it into the standard input of grep. This file gets opened before grep even gets executed. This little subtlety, could be key, could help you understand error messages that you're seeing. Because in this example, file.txt exists, right? Well, what if we gave it a file that didn't exist? Let's go ahead and grep foo.txt. Let's grep Dave out of foo.txt. This file does not exist. We know it does not exist. We did not create it. So what's gonna happen? Grep gives us an error. Grep gave us an error saying foo.txt, no such file directory. Very simple error, but look, grep the program is the one that experienced the error. I'm gonna show you a couple examples of this because what if we cat foo.txt and we pipe it to grep Dave? 
Cat gave us an error. They both gave errors. Um, in fact, let me rerun this and let me show you something. Let me, after we get the error, let's echo the error code so we can see what the program exited with. We have an error code of two. Let's go ahead and run this cat example and let's get the error code from this pipeline. We have an error code of one. This is very, very interesting, okay? I'm gonna tell you why this is interesting. Because in this example, foo.txt didn't exist, we couldn't open it, so grep gave us an error and it returned with the exit code too. Cat gave us an error saying that it couldn't open it, but we got an exit code of one. Notice that exit code is slightly different. That exit code came from grep, did not come from cat. Cat had an error, but we didn't care about that error. We looked at the exit code of grep. Very interesting because in bash, the exit code, the dollar question mark is always the thing at the end of the pipeline. So I'll teach you some cool things about bash. So if we have, let's make our own little pipeline here. Uh, so we have true is a program you could run. And then we have false like this. Or actually, let's do it. Let's do this. We have true here. We run true. If we get this, we can see that it exited with zero. If we run false, we can see that it exited with one, okay? Zero is true and one is false. This is a successful return code and this is an error return code. Why is this important? Let's start doing pipelines. Let's take true and pipe it into false. There's no data being piped between these two commands, but they're both gonna run. So if we do this, we get a failure. Why do we get a failure? Because false was at the end of the pipeline. The dollar question mark is the last thing, the thing at the end of a pipeline. Let's reverse this. What if we do false, pipe it into true? What happens now? Exit code is zero. It's successful. Of course it is. True was the last thing that ran. We didn't care about false. We just ignored that. True was the last thing that ran. So in this example where I think we, what do we do? We cat foo.txt, we pipe it to grep Dave. We get an exit code of one, but that one comes from grep because Dave wasn't finding the input. If you're putting this in a script, it's not gonna matter to you if you're just checking for an error or not an error. But this is a subtle distinction here. Look, cat had an error, grep, failed to find something in the stream. Yes, we still get the same effect, but some people don't really realize like this is masking an error. We're conflating an error with not found. Not an issue for most situations, but something to be aware of here. Now in bash, we do have a nice little variable. So let's go back up here where we have our false true. We have an array called pipe status, and this will be the exit codes of everything in the previous pipeline that ran, and it's an array. So in bash, we can join an array on spaces with this notation, a little bit weird if you've never seen it. I have other videos talking about this, but let's run this. So take a look at this. We have one and we have zero. False returned one and true returned zero. So this is pretty cool. If we were to, you know, cat foo.txt and pipe it to grep Dave, we get an error message. That's great. If we look at our pipe status, hey, look at this. Cat failed and also grep failed. Like, hey, that's kind of cool because if I, cat foo.txt and pipe that to cat and pipe that to cat and pipe that to grep foo. It's still gonna work, but we can see that the first cat failed because there is no foo.txt, but these two other cats, they work just fine. They got no input and they wrote no input. That's totally fine. The same way it's fine that if I were, if I were to cat dev null, look at that. It successfully opened the file, it successfully read it and it success successfully wrote zero bytes. So pipe status is super useful. It can help us out here. I realize this is confusing, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit to talk about why this is important because let's go back to this notation. We have grep file.txt was the name of the file and then Dave. So we can get that out of it. Hey, this file exists, very simple. And then I showed this alternative syntax where we can read in from this file and the shell reads this in. So let's go ahead and give it a file that doesn't exist. So now we get foo.txt, but look at the program that printed the error message. Bash, like I said before, the shell tries to open this. So let me show the three examples just so you can see what's going on. Cat foo.txt, pipe it to grep Dave. We can see the error message comes from cat. Very simple. Let's grep Dave and foo.txt. The error message comes from grep. Very simple. Let's grep Dave and read that in from foo.txt. The error message comes from bash. The important thing here, grep is not executed because bash attempts to open this file first before it even executes this command over here. So yes, in this example, you don't need cat. You can just read it in. You can give it as a file name here, or you could read it in from standard in. And also I'm gonna blow your minds if you've never seen this, cause this is wild. There is alternative syntax. Some people will do this. Some people really like this syntax. I'll use file.txt just to prove that it's working so we don't conflate error messages. 
Some people use this syntax. Sure, you could put a space between the two or you could leave the space out, doesn't really matter. You can use this syntax. You could put it at the beginning or you could put it at the end. Or, get ready for this. I hate this. Think this is gonna work? It works. You can put it wherever. Uh, don't do this. Don't, don't do this. I don't know why you would do this. This is super weird. But you can do it, and your shell, bash in this case, is the one responsible for opening that file, finding that file, and grep won't execute until that file has been opened for reading successfully. That's important to note here. So, yeah, you can avoid cat this way by just using the either your bash, like your shell's built-in way of reading a file, or if the utility like grep takes an argument like this, grep is the thing that can read that file. So you can avoid cat there. You don't need that second process running, which is really great. You don't need a fork. You don't need a pipeline. That's awesome. So of course, this raises the next question. What is the necessary use of cat? Do we ever really need cat? Um, yeah, we do. And I'll show you. Let's open up the bash, or the bash man page. Let's open up the man page for cat. This will demystify some things for us. Cat, concatenate and print files. So cat takes a bunch of arguments. If you're on Linux, you'll probably have more than this because I think this is the Mac version of cat. Um, some systems don't even take arguments for cat. Cat just takes the name of files and you can also give it an hyphen here and cat will read from standard in. So let me show you all this. I'm not gonna go into the options because they're gonna differ on different operating systems, but I'm gonna show you what cat can do. I can cat file.txt and that's great. I can cat, let's make, let's, let's make some files. Let's echo hello into foo.txt and let's echo by into bar.txt. So now we have three files. We have that big file, the original one, file.txt. We have foo.txt, which has hello in it, and we have bar.txt, which has by in it, okay? So let's cat foo.txt, again, which has hello. Let's cat foo.txt and bar.txt. There we go. We have concatenated files together. This is what it's really good at. You give it the names of files on the command line and it will push them together. It will just start reading one and then once that one's finished, it will move on to the next one. So it reads it in this order from left to right. So if we cat foo bar foo, you can specify the same file multiple times, we get hello by hello. And that's what cat does. Cat is really great. If we cat foo bar baz.txt, foo bar baz.txt, Look at this, hello, bye, an error message because Baz doesn't exist. Hello, bye, an error message because Baz doesn't exist. That's pretty wild, isn't it? If we were to cat foo.txt hyphen bar.txt, do you know what hyphen means? It's gonna hang. The reason it's hanging is because it's waiting for standard input. So I could echo Dave, pipe that into cat foo.txt hyphen bar.txt, and the hyphen gets replaced with the standard input. So what cat does when you give it no arguments, if I were to just pipe something to cat, this works, you can use hyphen to mean standard in, and then you'll get the file, foo.txt, you'll get the hyphen, which is the standard input, which was Dave, which was here, and then you get by, which was what was stored in bar.txt. So there's a lot going on here. This command is surprisingly, um, useful. You can do a lot of stuff with it. This is uh, very similar, but very different from the T command. T command, just like cat, you can run it without arguments and it will work. The difference is cat reads a list of arguments. So if I cat foo.txt, bar.txt, whatever, and then I get this. If I were to T those two files, I'm not going to run this. It would wipe out those files because I can echo, let's say, woohoo, and pipe that into T foo.txt and bar.txt, it's gonna print woohoo to the screen. And then also if we look in foo.txt, it's woohoo. And if we print bar.txt, it's woohoo. So T is the opposite of cat. Cat can concatenate multiple files, read multiple files one by one. T splits a stream and writes it to those destinations. Be very careful with the T command because you can overwrite files without meaning to. You just gotta be careful with it. So where does this leave us? We have foo.txt, we have bar.txt, and we have file.txt. So it's funny, making content online, I get comments from people because I'll be showing you guys cool things you can do. I'm like, hey, you know, we can cat this file and we can grep for Dave and then we can TR, um, what is it? Oh, I'm gonna try to do the syntax off the top of my head like this. I think it's this. And then we can uppercase everything that shows up in that. And then we run that and we get nothing because it wasn't in foo.txt, it was in file.txt. I gotta use better file names. So we can run this and that's how we can find Dave and we can get it uppercase, right? And then I get comments from people and like, oh, that's a useless use of cat, ha ha, you could just pass it to grep. Yes, you are right. You are 100% right with that. I have the mentality of when me, 
Dave, when I'm on the terminal working, I work from left to light, right. Pipelines work from left to right. The most data is here and the least amount of filtered data that I want is here. So this is the big stuff. This is, you know, a, like a, like a filter. And then this is another filter. So that's how I think that's how it works because I'm like, okay, let's get the data I want. It's here. Okay. Now I need to pull Dave out of it. Okay. I got Dave. Now I need to replace, I don't know, the A with O and now I have Dove. So that's how I think that's how I show examples. And then I show like, Hey, it doesn't have to be cat. This could be coming from like anything. This could be coming from a website. I could be curling my website and looking for Dave on it. And it turns out Dave is on this line and Dave is on this line. And also we've just replaced it with Dove Eddie. So yeah, stupid. But my point is I'll use cat in places just to show like, you know, Hey, it's a contrived example, but it could be anything over here. When I am writing a script, I will not use this. So my scripts, I'm a big proponent of when I have enshrined something I've worked on on the terminal and I'm putting it into a script to run, then I'm not gonna be doing a UUOC. I'm not gonna be using a useless use of cat, okay? In fact, I have a style guide for writing bash scripts, ysap.sh, uh, dope, style.ysap.sh, I had to remember what it was. If you curl style.ysap.sh, here is my bash style, style guide. You can run this in your terminal or you can go to this website in your browser and it will just render. So this is my style guide. This is how I write bash scripts. There's a whole section here and I don't remember where it is. So I'm gonna clear my terminal and we're gonna look for UUOC. There we go. I have a whole section on UUOC in my style guide. Don't use cat when you don't need it. If programs support reading from standard in, pass the data in using bash redirection. So you can see wrong, right, and also right. So both these are also right. So which one do I prefer? Which one does Dave prefer? Prefer using command line tools, built-in method of reading a file instead of passing in standard in. That means I would prefer this syntax over this syntax. One's not right or wrong. I just, in my aesthetic choice, I prefer this one. This is where we make the inference that if a program says it can read a file passed by name, it's probably more performant to do that. That's not guaranteed, that's an inference. In fact, it actually might just be an assumption. I don't even know if it's an inference. But the point is, I will prefer this syntax when I'm writing my scripts because I want them to be consistent. But if I saw this script in a script, I'd be like, yeah, that's totally fine. If I saw this in a script, I'd be like, buddy, come on, come on. There's better ways to do this. We can get better error checking. We can do way better things. Um, so yeah. This is kind of like UUOC. This is what people mean when they say useless use of cat award. There are legitimate uses of cat. It can concatenate files together. And if you're on systems with like cat minus V and stuff, some people consider this harmful. Um, there's all sorts of fun things you can do with cat. Uh, actually, yeah, curl ysap.sh pipe to cat minus V. And look, now my website looks terrible because <laughs> it's just making all the ANSI escape sequence visible. But if we were to get rid of that minus V, then hey, we get a nice looking website with a terrible looking progress bar at the top. No, I'm just kidding, the progress bar is fine. So yeah, that's kind of my deep dive into UUOC. I'm totally fine with you. When I'm showing you guys examples, yeah, I'm gonna be catting and piping into grep. When you guys are working on the terminal, you're gonna be catting and piping into grep. When you enshrine this stuff into a script, that's where you wanna start optimizing for things like that. If you're just using cat to read one file and pipe to something, hey, maybe just give that file to the command if it takes it, or use a redirection. You're probably in a shell. Your shell, if it's bash, you know, or any other shell, probably has some sort of file IO redirection. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's my little deep dive on UUOC. And real quick, I just wanna give a shout out to my patrons over at Patreon. Check it out. Thank you so much for supporting the content. Uh, if you like this content and you wanna support it, uh, easiest way, actually, hold on. You don't have to pay me. If you want to support it, just go hit the subscribe button. All right, I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers. So I would love to hit that 100,000 goal, get that silver play button, it'd be a ton of fun. But if you're like, you know what, Dave? I already hit subscribe and I want to give you money now. Hey, listen, you're speaking my language. So go to the Patreon, check it out. You'll get your name at the end of the video like this. I don't pay well any content. I like making my educational content free. So don't expect any exclusive content over there. Maybe some videos of me yapping over there, but no, no, there's no like exclusive stuff over there. So this is purely vanity if you want your name at the end of it, you just want to support me. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. And yeah, have a good one.